Well, I'm so happy again to invite. Thank you for inviting me here. Uh, it's a wonderful to have this collaboration together. Oh. So tonight's a topic about uh, turning the pain into a path. So in Tibetan tradition, in Dzogchen, also in Tantra, in also in the Sutra, in all the tradition, basically this this is a fundamental uh, understanding and belief that how so the pain does transform into the path. Uh, awakening of the Buddha, Buddha who first discovered the pain, uh, sufferings of the samsaric beings, and then recognizing that, entering into the path, liberating that. So that is how that pain or suffering has transformed. So it's the same way for, I think, for all of us, uh, that is true if we know how to do that. So first I wanted to start looking at a few aspects of the pain. Um, so one aspect of the pain, I think uh, what seems like most important is to acknowledge that pain exists. And, uh, and then once one begins to see the existence of the pain, and then to care about it. So I think the most commonly probably mistakes that we do is first to not acknowledge that there is pain. I think uh, we are all are quite good at that. So, uh, so if you look at the pain, so the, the level of pain when it physically manifests, a level of pain when it manifests as an argument, uh, level of pain when it's really like a like a more explosive externally, then only uh, we begin to acknowledge it because even you are still continuously denying it, the rest of the world is saying, come on, here is a problem. Or your family, every member of family is saying, come on, here is a problem. Or your partner is beginning to say, I'm leaving you. So whatever, I think the main thing is that somehow when we begin to see external reaction of the situation, then only we begin to kind of wake up and very often and then it becomes a little bit too late and sometimes there's a, there's a possibility to turn around other time I think uh, it's too late so, so I think that is the um, very frequently what happens so now the question about uh, acknowledging first acknowledging means to not always turning out when when there is a pain. For example, I, I sometimes talk about uh, a karmic cushion. This is the notion I say, sometimes people sit on a rotten karmic cushion. Okay? Uh, what I mean by that is sometimes you're not aware of that. You know, you are, think you are taking a nice walk in a park. Instead, you are sitting on your painful karmic cushion. Uh, how you do that is that, that how, the sign of doing that is basically you don't see the trees, you don't see, hear the birds, you don't smell the flowers. Uh, you basically what you are physically you're kind of walking is like a dead man walking. Okay, so it's just walking there, and, but you what you the real experience of your body, energy, and mind is very much in that pain, uh, caught up with that pain, thinking about that pain kind of journeying into the ideas of the ego trip of that pain. So somehow there's no actual relationship, your body, your energy, and your mind to the park. And that's what I mean by sitting on a rotten karmic cushion. And that is true, not only while walking in the park, could be even the example of saying, having a nice party, or, or having a nice celebration. You can be in the beautiful celebration, but mind is not being part of that celebration. So that's true in a life, in a particular celebration, walking in a park, somehow that you are disconnected. Bottom line is you are kind of disconnected with the experience, what life is giving, what the nature is giving, what other people are giving to you. You are you all, you're too much caught up with yourself. So somehow, until you recognize that, <clears throat> I think there's no solution for that until you truly 
recognize and acknowledge one's own pain, I don't think there's any solution for that. And it's, it's sometimes I think it's a beautiful experience when you, you acknowledge that. Uh, sometimes I feel like the experiences of such that you are in the middle of things, activities, discussions, confusions, little pain. In the middle of that experience, you turn in, you close your eye, you draw attention to inward, do you see my, is the stillness is still there. You can moment, when I look at that place of stillness in myself, it's amazing to see how solidly that place is always in myself. It's just it's a simply a matter of our turning our attention to the right place. Because my attention is very much outward on somebody, particularly what somebody did wrong, particularly the ideas of what can go further, wrong things can happen, and my attention is so much toward that. And if I cannot turn, be aware of that, and turn attention to the right place, there is no solution. And that, it sounds easy, but it's like a one simple attention, but that can take years or lifetime to, to make that simple shift. And, and that's true for many people. It, takes, it does take a lifetime to make that simple shift. And some people probably never able to do it in one lifetime. It will take probably many lifetimes to make that little shift. But that little shift can be a shift of a total transformation of somebody's life. A simple shift that basically means being aware of that moment and know there is some 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 other place to be and there is another experience than that. And only you, when you know that, what you do is you turn in. Especially when there is a lot of movement, you turn to that stillness especially when there's a lot of voices in, internally talking, you turn yourself to that silence. When you have so much uh, uh, thoughts and the ego uh, joining so much, you turn, which way you feel like completely restricted, bounded condition, you turn toward that spaciousness aspect of the mind. And these three qualities are always there. And the moment that you turn to that stillness, silence, spaciousness, all these things experiencing in your body immediately changes. Immediately changes. It's not, it's not a question of taking long time. The moment you begin to draw attention, the moment you draw your attention inward, the moment you hear that silence, all the voices inside dissolve by itself. It's powerful as that. But most of the time, we do not listen to that silence. We listen to that noise. We participate with that noise. We negotiate with that noise. We plan things together to create more pain with that voice. And we are good at that. <laughs> and sometimes, we even say, oh, I don't want you to talk with that. And what you're do, doing, you're still talking. You're talking not to talk. And you're planning not to talk. And you're blaming that you're talking. That is talk too. So somehow, there's no way somehow finding a solution to silence that voice. So, so if you listen to it, as you would listen to the sound, but you're not listening to the sound, rather you're listening to the silence. You're trying to listen to that silence inside. Same way if I would listen to somebody's, some voice. The moment you hear that, the voice is gone. Just turn your attention inward. 
you listen to that silence the moment you hear that silence that voice inside dissolves when you have like thoughts like worried about something and that worry worrying making plan and worrying about the plan might not work all this thoughts and you're feeling pain with that thought confusion with that thought so if you rather than rejecting that thought controlling that thought trying to stop that thought blaming that thought you don't do nothing what you simply do allow it because it's coming anyway is there there is a purpose to be that particular thought that particular time in your life you look at everything what is there it's what's probably supposed to be there and it has a purpose and probably in the end everything's existence is the purpose is to help you to grow so you look at that thought as as it's there and just you just don't reject the moment you don't reject you you open to it you go toward it and you go so close to it almost you penetrate through through it like a, you're trying to catch rainbow you go through it what you find is just a space there or you feel it around within that thought feel it around and within that thought not rejecting it not inviting it just see the thought feel the thought around and within that thought what you feel the moment you feel that a spaciousness thought itself it cannot sustain anymore it's gone it's it's not there anymore but if you reject it you look who is rejecting it it's another thought and that thought is kind of worse because that thought is thinking i am a smarter thought <laughs> therefore i have to reject that negative thought away i am the solution and you are stuck with the solution now in the doctrine it says a blooded hand cannot be washed with the blood you can remove first blood you remain with the second blood you still remain with the blood so if you choose between first and second and second is better then it's one thing if you if your goal is to get rid of blood you haven't succeeded and you're kind of deluding oneself thinking that i have succeeded getting rid of blood that doesn't happens so first acknowledging second caring about the pain so when i look see what that means like caring about the pain it's i think some very often we don't care about our pain what we do example would be um, what about if you are in a very much need of somebody's support of uh, you are very much in need of a support from a family member you're in trouble and you are need a support from family member and what kind of trouble you are maybe whatever the circumstances situation in the life you are in trouble then you need a real support from somebody you expect to be supported supporting you now imagine that how you would feel 
that that person is supporting you. How will you feel? Most of the time, we will feel that we are supported by that person if that person is available, if that person is open, rather than saying, yeah, I'm going to help you, but you mess us up a hole here. That doesn't feel very supportive. I'm going to help you, but next time you be careful. There's some condition there. I'm going to help you, but if you listen to me. What, you're, what somebody is doing, putting a lot of conditions there. Or somebody is very agitated. Somebody is more fearful of the circumstances than you are in. You feel less fearful of your mess. Somebody is more agitated about your mess. And that person is supposed to be helping you. Do you feel supported? No. You feel that person needs more help from you than that person can help you. More fearful, less grounded, very talkative, agitated, fearful, You also feel no support when somebody is there physically and you know in the spirit they are not there. They are looking at their watch. They are counting the day, hours, minutes. They are making phone calls, making plans somewhere else. They are not there. You know they are not there. But body is there. Do you feel supported? No. So how you feel supported? You feel supported when somebody is fully present, open, non-judgmental, available, caring, silence, unless needed to be spoken, there's silence, it's always beautiful, they're there, sitting right next to you. Do you feel supported? Yes. So that is exactly the example that how your pain will be feeling supported from you. If you do that with your pain, your pain will heal fast. Because your pain is feeling the same support that I'm talking about. How? Don't be judgment about your pain. You're feeling pain, you're saying, I messed it up. I messed it up again. I did last year. I think I'll do it again. Maybe my, I might do the rest of my life. You're doing exactly the same thing what you know somebody does to you. If you, if you, if you have a, one example of a person who you really want to be, you want somebody's, that, that person's support, and you don't feel you're getting that person's support, you look at all the examples of why you're not getting support, you're doing exactly the same, those things that what you're doing toward your pain. You're constant judging yourself. There's no a moment of silence just observing that pain, allowing that pain, feeling that pain, carrying that pain. Constant judgment. Control. Of course you cannot control, but you're trying to control it. There's no way to control it. You, nobody has succeeded to control that way. But you're trying to control that pain, force that pain, judge that pain, get nervous with that pain, get agitated with that pain. You're doing all the things what you're not supposed to do. Therefore, pain become more painful. So, one thing is to have a pain, another thing is to be a pain. <laughs> and very often, we identify with our pain. We feel, not that we have it, we feel we are. Some sense of uh, a confusion there. And very often we identify with the pain, 
the ego identify with the pain, then ego reacts to the world also. You would say things in, in a way, if you look at the pain, pain did not want to say what you are saying. For example, you would get mad and say terrible things to somebody. If you closely look at it, who is saying it? Is it a pain? No, pain is not a pain. Pain is just simply, is a, in some sense, it's not like a pure experience. It's just, just feeling. It's feeling something deep. The ego is interpreting that, saying, you're in threat. You have to defend. And how? I'll do it for you. I have a whole email written. I have a whole conversation set it up. And let's start with that. And you send that send button. Or you open that mouth. And what are you doing? You, you think you're kind of trying to communicate with something with that pain, but you're not really communicating with the pain. It's the ego is talking. And ego, and as a result of that, ego is creating more pain. Because ego, even in some sense, ego don't have real connection to the pain. Probably in some way, ego is probably never connected to the pain. That is the, probably the most problematic aspect of the ego. It has, it has no connection. In contrary, the awareness has true connection to it. It's the same way acknowledging not only pain in oneself, but acknowledging the pain of somebody else. I think that's, that's true, true. I think most powerful healing, most powerful uh, communication happens when you understand somebody's pain. Because if you think about any bodhisattvas, I mean, even the bodhicitta, compassion is the, one of the greatest parts to achieve enlightenment. Bodhisattva, the who has the compassion, who is also a great uh, practitioner, a yogi, the reason is because they have, have, have that mind. What that mind is, understanding of pain of somebody. That makes that person very unique and different. Just imagine if the Bodhisattva is watching everybody's ego talk. Of course, nobody wanted to have compassion to those ego talks. But if somebody listened to the pain of somebody, no matter who that person is, you feel compassion. For example, if you look at in your own life, person who makes you angry, why it makes you angry? Because you're listening to the ego of that person, actions of ego of that person, talks of ego of that person. But if you listen to the pain of that person, a conditions of that person, your heart opens up. Imagine if you're waiting for somebody and somebody comes late, and you, you're getting angry and angry and angry and angry and angry and angry. You know, every five minute, every five minute, you're getting angrier and angrier. And suddenly a person shows up, says, I have an accident, my car broke down. What do you feel? In a second, all those accumulated anger within a few hours just dissolves. In a second, it dissolves. Why? Because you recognize somebody's pain. In life, it's exactly the same thing. If you, whenever, when you see somebody's pain, you dissolve. We have naturally capacity to do that. When we understand somebody's pain, we melt. When we understand our own pain, ego melts. Now, in a practical way, in a practical sense, how you would do that? In a practical sense, how you would do that? I think probably that's always a good question. Yeah, you know, what you do is uh, anytime. Okay, a few things first. Uh, 
from big pain to a small pain. Okay? Uh, when, when, when you have a kind of some strong sense of pain, what do you do? First, be aware of that. I'm feeling it right now. You turn your attention inward and simply look at that. What's happening? Maybe you're saying, I'm looking at it, I don't see it. You're, that's a voice, you're talking. Or you're saying, it sounds very easy, but it's, it's not that easy, I know that. You're talking. You're saying, oh, I can just look at the pain, but that he, he never changes or she never changes. I can look at my own experiences, but what helps if they don't change? If he doesn't change, she doesn't change. You're talking. You're not even paying attention to your pain. The moment you feel that stillness, the movement aspect of that pain dissolves. You feel like more settling quality, because pain has this very agita ag agitation. The moment you feel that stillness, that agitation, the movement aspect of that pain, just becomes very still. The reason is because you draw attention toward that stillness. The moment you feel that stillness, pain has transformed into a path. That dissolution, that experience, feeling of stillness is a path. If you feel the stillness right now, that is a path, absolute path for liberation. It's a matter of fully realizing that, matter of able to integrate that in everyday life, but that is a path. In the Dzogchen teachings, sometimes it's called a base path. Base means where you start from. Jinejilam. It's called base path. But you you experiencing that from point of view as a door of stillness, because the door of stillness has so much to do with our body, because having this body, you feel so much movement. And then on the other hand, other aspect is the voices inside. You you hear voice is a, is a, how you say, a voice of pain. Pain speech, a voice of pain, you hear it. It's a pain talking. It's not you. Your pain is talking. You're free from pain. Pain is talking, you're identifying with the pain, you're confused who you are. The moment you realize you're not that voice, you're not that pain, you become free. How you do that? Same principle. If, you, if there's too many voices inside, particularly you draw a special attention to the silence. Because movement and Sound is two different things. Stillness and silence is two different experiences. You listen to that silence. The moment you hear that silence, that voice has gone. That pain has gone. That pain now became part. And the silence is your part. That silence is what you have realized. Now it's a question about maintaining that silence, nourishing that silence, fully realizing that silence, integrate that silence with every voices, every sound, every music, but that silence is your part. That's how you turn, you transform, or you turn 
that pain of voice into the uh, uh, path of silence. And same way, that if in the mind, if you any given moment, if you look at your mind, probably mind could be clearer than it is. And we, we don't know sometimes if mind is clear or not. It's only 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 way we know is when it's easier to know somebody look at somebody else and you can see that person is in a bad mood. You say. This person is in a bad mood. And what do you think well, you are in? <laughs> you look at other people, you see obs- mind is like a, in, in, a, in a whole notion of the Buddhism, it says, Simji uh, Vesala. Nature of mind is clear and luminous. Mind is always luminous. I mean, that's the amazing thing about it. If you if you wanted to know how that feels like, of course, the best time to best time to try to experiment that will be the worst time in your life. When when you're truly confused, you truly feel pain, and that will be the, probably the best time to experiment because you know if it's luminous or not. But if you look at it in the right way, in the right place, you will see it is luminous. It is completely luminous. You look, you look, look at it, it's just luminous. It does, it, it's like, it has always been. But if you're not looking at it, if looking at the confusion, the creation of the ego, and wrong identities, product of wrong identity, all the situation, then of course you don't see that. If you look at the mind itself, it's clear. It can never be not clear. I think there is no force in the universe which can obscure the nature of the mind. There is no force in the universe which can destroy the space. It can destroy the mountain, but not the space. There is no force. And it's always there. This is the matter of drawing attention inward. See that space. It's there. So that's how we turn turn pain into the path. So pain, pain of body, pain of movement. Or, or you can say pain of voice, or inner voice, or pain of mind, confusion. So turning that movement of the body, of the movement of the pain in the stillness and making the stillness a path to liberation. Recognizing those voices of pain inside, listening to the silence, hearing the silence, turning the silence as a path to a liberation. Feeling that obscuration, condition, blockages of the mind, connecting with that spaciousness of the mind and turning that confusion or obscuration of the mind into a spaciousness of the mind, turning that spaciousness into a path for liberation. So that's how each conditions transform into each path and each path leads to a final liberation. As simple as that. Of course, you can say that sounds very easy. Yeah, that is that is what it said in the Dzogchen. It says, I'm so easy, therefore you do not understand me. As you know, we know very well we love complicated things. Whatever is harder to get, we think it's better. <clears throat> and probably some people's biggest problem is that they always want something what they cannot get. 
And that's the only way to not able to not see what you have. And I, I sometimes I say, I remind myself saying, if you want more, appreciate what you have. Those will those who deserve to have more if they are fully appreciate what they have. If they don't appreciate what they have, they do not deserve more. Because why? More does not make any sense because they don't know what they have. The greatest thing we have is this moment, this present, our life. Probably that's the rich, most richness that we have. And most of the time, sometimes we don't see that aspect of ourselves. So, in the same sense, it's, it's easier. And it's always, I'm always with you, therefore you don't understand me. I'm, all, I'm too close to you, therefore you don't understand me. So, practically speaking, it's a very simple way. If you don't remember all the things I said, just forget about it. Okay. Okay. In, 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 in short, whenever you feel pain, just be open to it. And just hear. Your pain is here. And here, who usually talks, analyzes, judges, that I'm talking about that. That part. I'm not talking about so much about the pain. I'm talking about that. That part should be like a good support. And good support means we already gave an example of what it means to good support. So you be that good support to your pain. That makes sense? Okay, I repeat this again. I gave, I gave this example earlier saying, uh, when you are really much in need of support from somebody, your family member, what do you expect from them? That is exactly the pain is expecting from you. Like what? Strong presence. Complete open. But most importantly, non-judgmental. Don't, not judging, judging it. Just being there. So what? Of course, sometimes people have problems with that. I think, in the, especially in the West, people have problem with the stillness. People have problem with the silence. People have problem with the spaciousness. They think it's dumb when you are just spacious. No creativity. People are silent and they think it's a problem. People are still, then they think it's a problem. So, therefore, everybody, even they, even they suppose they are still, they suppose they always pretend to be busy. One, that was one of the most cultural shock for me when I first time came to U.S. Mm -hmm. I'm busy. Everybody have to say that. That's the mantra. <laughs> you know, if somebody says I'm not busy, something wrong with you, right? <laughs> Something wrong. And if somebody says, what do you do? You say nothing. <laughs> and what they say? Okay. Something got to be wrong here. <laughs> this is not normal. <laughs> you see, why? Because we have problems with the stillness. And you come to meet somebody, immediately somebody trying to talk to you. Do you really have to talk? Especially when you don't know what to talk? No. You always end up saying something very stupid when you, when you don't know what to say. <laughs> so it's better to be silent. But people do. They feel silence is not good. They feel, I might be offending if I don't say anything. Silence is beautiful. I know, I, I think there are many times, many, many times I feel, see, meet people like, a, like having relationship problems or something like that. And I say, what have you been doing? I said, we have been talking, we have been talking, we have been talking, we have been talking for a long time. We have also, we have therapy, one therapy, two therapies. So there's more people talking. Nowadays, the worst thing is they put up in a space, uh, how do you say, this space, uh, what do you call it? 
Spacebook. <laughs> you see, Spacebook. Facebook, sorry, the Facebook. <laughs> Spacebook, that's good to me. <laughs> They are putting everything, everything what they do every day, you know, who cares? <laughs> you know? You know. So it's just like a, somehow having difficulty be still, silence, and that spacious mind. I think that is a very a, a challenging situation. So anyway, the point what I'm trying to say here is just simply Feel that pain and just be open and just look. As if your good friend is there with that stillness, openness, non-judgmental being with you and supporting you. Same way you be with your pain that way, just still silence, spacious, open. You have no idea how powerful healing this moment can be. Probably, probably the best the healing process you can ever imagine. <clears throat> that stillness, that silence, that spaciousness can be to your pain. I don't think there's nothing better. As, as far as the healing is concerned, if you believe in the healing, and if self, as far as it is changing and transforming that pain is concerned, there is nothing better than that awareness. There's nothing better. There's nothing, one thing is better than that. And that tool is within you. Just being there. Of course, you, you, you're being there, and then you will say, I don't think this is going to help. <laughs> well, that is the voice. With that voice, definitely it will not help. Yeah, it's very difficult to get that rid of that voice. You will say something like, yes, I can do that, I can just sit with that, but what is going to change my life? How is it going to take care of my broken car? How is going to stop my alcoholic husband? Yes, of course you can analyze those things. You say something like that. That is the voice. That voice in you who says how it can stop my alcoholic husband is the voice who is contributing to the, your husband to drink more. When it becomes stronger, vibrating, and her energy is moving out, becoming a voice, Action, agitation, it is making that person drink more. And you have no idea that you are part of that contributor. Not only that, it's also a part of your own pain which is contributing more. Yeah, so that moment when you're look, listening, yeah, you have, to, you have to be aware there's a voice in you. The moment you stop that voice, when you feel that connection to the space, <clears throat> we, we only know like kind of how, how, how fr flowers nourish, how fruits and trees, how our physical body nourish, but we have no good sense of how space, space nourish, nourishment of the space, the nourishment of that awareness. We have no clue.
most time, some of the most beautiful experiences I have with people is when I saw they connect. In a very short time, when they connect with that space, the tears come out, the joys come out, their forgiveness comes out, the strength comes out, the clarity what to do comes out. Amazing qualities manifest out. And comes out from where? From that space. When you're allowing it, it's giving birth to everything. And you say, why then it didn't come out before? Of course there was not much space there. You have occupied that space, obscures with your ego. You have voices, so much voices have kind of lost its connection to the silence. So much agitation and movement have no connection to the stillness. How something is going to come out from that space? It's bagging in some sense. You know, in some way, I think your pain is more interested than being free from you than you are interested in being free from your pain. It's the same thing like with somebody, you know, like if you said, I want to get rid of that person, what do you think about that person thinks? Same thing. <laughs> same thing. But it only comes when one acknowledges the pain and when one cares about the pain, which means just being open to it. Simple as that. It just means being open to it. And only not only being open to it, but being open to it long enough, then you know the power of that space, the potentiality of that space. Most of the time, we are not power, we are not aware enough. A typical example will be when people work on like a, trying to clear up their psychological mess or pain. They say, okay, I've been working for all these years, now I think my problems are gone. Well, some people say that. That means what? That means stop. I'm liberated now. No. In some sense, when you're able to clear your pain or clear your confusion, it's just the half part of the half part of the journey has finished. The second part of the journey, and probably the most important part of the journey has not started yet. If, 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 you, if I give a very sh short example of it, let's say you're having some really like a kind of obsessive thoughts, okay? And you've been going like this for the last few days, okay? And suddenly you notice that, you're aware of that, Contrib not contributing, not participating, not judging, being open, and finally you just you discover that spaciousness in that thought. Like, like this. And that thought, it's gone. Thought is not there. Then you say, wow, this is beautiful. It's gone. Then what do you say? Okay, what is the next? <laughs> of course you say immediately, what is the next? It means, which next thing that I'm going to worry about? <laughs> right? So you know, that it's not about the topic. It's about the one who is worrying about it, who finds always a new topic. And then you're looking, you know, okay, one week break. And the next week, you come up with a new idea. Okay, it's the tax time. <laughs> that is a good reason to be worried. Then you worry again. So, being in that moment being open to that thought, it just clears by itself. So anyway, so 
so so there's a few things here related with the stillness silence and spaciousness so these are uh, the parts what, what I'm referring to as a part so that it's a, a universal that everybody can have a common experiences everybody can have the same experiences no matter which kind of pain uh, everybody have says oh no you have no idea about my pain you know I've, I've, my, uh, if you tell if I tell you my story then you will you know you will think different no I don't you know? <laughs> and I've heard so many different people's problems and it's and almost it's like a, I have been I, when we were growing up we watched a lot of Indian movies okay and all these Indian movies the same story so you see five five minutes of the movie, beginning of the movie you know how it's going to end so our pains are like that was somebody tell begin to tell five minutes you know all the story one time I got a letter from somebody 80 pages 80 pages and hold the 80 pages every page was saying the same thing <laughs> but some why I, why I said why somebody is repeating that much because of course they think I will not hear it because <laughs> yes, you make sure you got it explain this way that way but in the end it's just the so core is a, it's the same very simple core is very simple and that is some, somehow either you see some in somebody else's thing or your own thing when you got, get to that core place it's simpler it's, it's not that complex and there's always question about acknowledgement acknowledging that either within yourself or within others okay so some questions Some questions from that silence. <laughs> yes? Rikishe, what is that space? What is the source of that space, that spaciousness, that luminosity? What is the source of that space? Is the space. Space itself. There's nothing there's nothing else than itself. Is it is it emptiness? Well, if you like to call that, you can call it. Is it God? If you like that, you can call that also. <laughs> you can call anything. And the beautiful thing about that space is it doesn't change because somebody calls it differently. It just doesn't change. But in experience, when you're trying to experience that, at that time, it's, not, it's important not to call anything. Because any calling will be the only way to not get ex you ex experiencing it. Because any name will be interference to connection to that. The name should serve to lead there, but the name is clearly is not the entrance, because name is the block. But it can serve to get close to it. But in the end, name itself is a problem. I mean, how you experience that? If you look at in your own experience, any time this 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 question about acknowledging. When I use this word too, like acknowledging and carrying it, I think if you look at it, both acknowledging and carrying could have some conceptual aspect of it. Oh yes, I have pain. That's okay. But in the end, it's not about, oh, I have a pain. It's not about that. It's just being open. Not, it's not even about that. It's just being open. And then the moment you open, that is how is a space is, is such an incredible processor. I don't think there's anything such as this awareness of the space as a processor of as emotion. There's no, for sure, there's no analysis equal to that processor. And so when you're trying to analyze something, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to process some emotions. And you don't know the processor, ha processor itself has a problem. 
You have no idea about that. But with that awareness, it's the greatest processor ever. If one is in that awareness, it processes everything. The beautiful thing about that, that spacious awareness is that it's like a light. It does not recognize the history of the darkness, how long it has been, how intense it has been, how complex it is. It doesn't recognize anything. It just know to illuminate the darkness. It doesn't ask any question, saying, okay, uh, let's see your darkness. How long you have been in a dark? How many people you have put it in a dark place as you? You know, it says, no matter how much confused you are in, it doesn't recognize that. That's the beautiful about that awareness. It doesn't recognize. It's like a light. If you turn it on, it doesn't say, oh, I don't like this darkness here, you know. So I don't want it to illuminate. No, it doesn't. The moment it shines, darkness is gone. The moment you are aware that, that pain is gone. It doesn't recognize this. And the thought in the thought is like that. You know, I sometimes we put in people in meditation, they're having great experiences. And they, they say, This is not real. My pain has been long history. This cannot be real. What I'm feeling is not real. I'm feeling great, but this is not real. <laughs> it's amazing. They say that. They put the label of real, if they're feeling great, feeling so spacious, they say it's not real. The moment they begin to feel their pain, yes, this is a familiar place. As a saying, you know, the familiar hell is better than unfamiliar heaven. And that is true for many people. When they feel that pain, they say, yes, that seems like coming back to home. And they don't, don't have any questions. This is it. This is me. This is me. This is my karmic cushion. This smells right. <laughs> Feels familiar. Okay? Any other? Yes. So, can you speak more about the distinction between stillness, silence, and spaciousness? Okay. Well, if you look, if you look in ourself, uh, the question is, if, you, if I can say a few words more about stillness, distinction between the stillness, silence, and spaciousness, is stillness has so much to do with the body, okay, which, in, which not I say, which includes our physical body, but it doesn't uh, exclude anything else, such as ego, for example, identity. Our identity, and a deep identity, is also our body. You know, so as this body, we identify so much with this body, right? We say, I'm getting old. That means I'm body is body is getting old. I have a pain means my knee has a pain. So we identify so much with the body. So same way, our deep identity, sometimes sometime it's a little bit more than the body, that identity is also a, a body. Okay, maybe I'm, this part is always a little bit complicated part, but, but I'll see how, how we can do this. So, stillness has to do with the body. Okay, it always has to do with what's movement, stillness. Body includes this one and I, ego, identity, this, there are two bodies there. Silence has to do with the speech. Speech, voices, thoughts, like inner voices. Sometimes yes, there are some people don't speak so much they're with their mouth, but they are, they are loud enough with their mind. So they don't need to speak, right? You can feel vibration there. So there are voice inside, speech. Mind, 
it's like obscuration of mind, it's like a, a, the spaciousness of the mind has something to do with the ignorance, thoughts. That thoughts, ignorance, or even subtle ego, they are all obscuring like a clouds. So the clouds doesn't help to feel the space. So when the clouds removes, then you feel the spaciousness of the sky. So uh, spaciousness has to do with the mind. Uh, silence has to do with the speech. And stillness has to do with the body. And body does not, uh, how you say, talks about only about this body. That's what I'm saying. We, usually when we think about body, we only refer to this. But really, like in the truth, it's, it refers more to the ego. But, but this includes this body also. In, in a sense, simple way to understand will be stillness has to do with the body. And more, very often, many meditations, people, when people are trying to uh, ex practice with the stillness, they're trying to apply the body walk, with the walking meditation, be, being still, with the, referring a lot through the body. So a body becomes important a tool or door to, to, to experience that stillness. The silence, voice, remaining silence or remaining something in our voice is the kind of doorway to that silence. And to trying to remain mind clear or finding the spaciousness, a doorway to that spaciousness of the mind. And in our tradition, we call it Dharmakaya, Sambhavakaya, and Nirmanakaya. The three, like what we call like a three kayas, we call like a three doors. But in some way, if, if, yeah, I mean, a very simple way will be if you, uh, in a simple and very nice way will be if you listen to you, connect with your body, for example. If you sit like this, you draw full attention to your body, physical body, and connect with that stillness. Don't hold the breath, just breathe. It's a very distinctive experience. Now if you listen to the silence, that means especially when you're talking in internally, you listen to the silence. In fact, that voice in you is the doorway to that silence. The, the voice in you is a support to find that silence. So you be open to that voice, allow that voice, feel the silence in it. It's there. The moment you hear that silence, that voice has no power. And resting there is a very distinctive experience. Now, if you look at your conceptual mind, a thought, a very solid thought, my idea, it's right. Look at that solid thought. It's it's for sure. It's like a obscuring a, a spaciousness in you. It's blocking some potentiality, a creativity of your mind. But it's a very solid thought. Rather than rejecting it. or being proud of it, just simply be open to it. And feel the spaciousness around and within that thought. You feel it. 
you feel it more. When that awareness becomes alive, that thought dissolves. Your idea no longer important. You're more flexible. You're more spacious. You have more chance to grow. You have more chance to become creative. You have chance to evolve the next step. And that experience is kind of very, very distinctive experience. In the end, that spaciousness, that silence, that stillness is the same. But in the path, they are different. Because you found one through your thought, one through your, that voice, one through the movement. In the path, they are different. In essence, they are the same. So, so you are in your path, therefore you are interested in, in the path. But when you arrive there, it's, there's no, no distinction. If you come from the one door or the other door, where you arrive, it's the same place. It's no longer, it's no longer important where you came from. It's only important where you come from, it's where you have lost. That makes it important where you come from, no? If you lost on the east side, better you find the eastern door, it's the closest to you. Of course, you can always go to the west, but the recommendation will be find the closest door. As in a plane, they always say, next exit will be, could be right behind you. <laughs> in the plane, they always say that, right? They remind you specifically, exits, you know? The closest entrance is right within you. The closest entrance will be right there with you. If, the, if it's the voice, the voice could be the closest entrance. If it's the movement, the movement is the closest entrance. If the obscuration of mind, ignorance, the ignorance is the closest entry. So what we do, we love to complicate. <laughs> we just, the farthest as possible. It's interesting, right, how we lose the interest to something that which is close to you. Yeah. Yes. I, I thought I would in introduce our other audience here. There's okay. about uh, 250 people all around the world who are watching. And listening, and we have a few questions. Um, we even have some people who are staying up late. Uh, we've got people from Poland, Mexico, Hong Kong, Ireland, Bulgaria, Spain, Brazil. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we've got some people in Texas and Houston. These are the people who are inside themselves. And one person asked, um, if the nature of mind is clear, how did our minds, how did our minds get so clouded? <laughs> Not knowing it. <laughs> so if the nature of mind is clear, how our mind is clouded, that is the question. The answer seems like a not knowing it, it becomes cloudy. That is what exactly what I'm trying to say. If we are feeling pain, first acknowledging means knowing it. Trying to know, acknowledge. And not only acknowledge, but care about it. Uh, how you care about it? Probably do exactly the opposite of what usually you do, then I think that's probably enough definition. <laughs> okay? Yeah, uh, somewhere here. Okay. In um, Dzogchen or Bun or Tibetan Buddhism, is there ever a connection made between pain and love? Well, I think in the same way, if you think about like a okay, connection 
Uh, the question is if there is any connection between the pain and love in Bern Dzogchen Buddhism. Okay. Uh, so I wanted to talk from myself rather than trying to talk from Dzogchen or Buddhism or Bern. Okay, so that reason is by I think uh, talk a little bit more with experience here. Okay, so not categorizing with the source tradition there particularly. The, the connection is what we just made here. We are talking about the pain, being acknowledging, being aware. And um, so when the moment, for example, uh, love, for example, okay, love and anger is like a two, the opposite side. If you look at our anger, and anger has its own pain, yeah, anger has its own confusion, so now when you look at the anger, and anger is pain, pain of the anger, same principle. If you feel that stillness of that, feel the silence of that, feel the spaciousness of that anger, or that anger's related pain, and what you see, it dissolves. As a dissolution, when the anger dissolves, what you found, you found a space. You can call it cessation of anger. It's a cessation of anger because anger was there, anger is gone. What do you find? It's a space. And that space is a unique space to cultivate love. The only way you can have, only way really you can have experience of true love to, to have a recognition of that cessation of anger. That space. If that space has recognized, you have a chance to experience love. If that space is not there, no matter how much you pretend to having love, you don't have a love. And most of the time, we don't know even mean we don't really know what love means, because we our loves are very much conditional, pain-based love. Proof is, you're able to hate somebody next second that we were crazy about that person one minute before. How you can how you can change so fast? A love to hate, because that is not love. It's not love. Why is it not love? Because there is no space. The ultimate sense of love will means, which has the better, more space there is in the love, the better the love is. The less space in the love, the lower quality of the love is. And we know that very well if you look at our attachment to our families. Of course. Loving your children, your partner, your family member, we all know what that means. But clearly, it is attachment. So how much that you, how much you are aware of that attachment? Oh, this is beautiful. Of course, I look at it that way, and when I feel that attachment, I feel this is beautiful. But this is attachment. <laughs> Acknowledge that. Be aware of that. Prepare yourself for that goal. But it's going to go anywhere one day, right? So you, it's not even a choice. Not the nature. So the more space you can feel that, it doesn't minimize the love. It enriches that quality of love. It becomes richer, not less. So for sure, there's a great connection. There's an important connection. No? And not only with love, but like every other every other quality and emotion, they're all same 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 level of connections. Yeah. And Polly, you have any? Even if we want to more than anything. Yeah, yeah, that's a beautiful question. I think uh, the question is why it's so difficult to go inside even though we really wanted to go inside. I think it has something to do with unfamiliar, unfamiliarity. We are not very familiar, we don't trust enough. I mean, we just, as we said, going inside, it seems like the easiest thing to do, but we don't do it. Probably we feel it will not work. Probably we don't have experiences of it. 
even we do have experience of then we have ego in, interfering and saying it this is this is not that easy and as i said earlier people they they're feeling it they're feeling connection to it they're feeling healing of it they're feeling absence of pain they're feeling presence of joy but they still question about this is this cannot be true they question like that i think why because they are not familiar so what i tell people i have been thinking a lot about it and how 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 is possible to make people more familiar with this so i come up with some ideas okay one of the idea is that think about taking a pills okay pill of stillness the pill of silence pill of spaciousness you have three pills to take okay <laughs> okay so if you're taking like uh, i don't know like um, any multivitamin or 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 whatever you're taking whatever medicines you're taking which you're supposed to take um, i don't know three pills four pills five pills whatever you're taking a day what do you do you're trying to make sure that you take those pills every day right you make sure you take those three pills so what i'm saying you look at the same way you take three pills you so recommendation is think about you take three pills this is a prescription <laughs> i'm prescribing that three pills red white and blue if you want a color <laughs> if you want a quality stillness silence and spaciousness take three pills so how many times it depends how severe you're sick <laughs> if you're really sick then you got to take a lot if you are not too bad you can take less but let's say at least start taking three pills a day so you have a option to do when to take stillness when to take silence when to take spaciousness you have option to you can choose and uh, the way you make choices in some way you don't choose it chooses you when you are too much movement agitation you see agitation chose you a particular time in your day and that moment you say thank you for agitation you remind me taking a pill of stillness and you just go because there is right there in front of you it's saying come come close to me and you'll feel it here and that's what you do you just go toward it with full openness and you feel it your stillness is in your confusion don't go somewhere else reject your movement it's trying to control that and trying to find stillness somewhere no go toward it see in it it's right there within it and that's what is inviting you the moment you you realize don't talk don't talk this way don't talk that way You're talking 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 you recognize this is the time to take the pill of silence what do you do you go toward them be open hear that silence within that voice silence is within that voice because the silence is the nature of that sound space is the nature of every matter it's within that don't look space and rejecting matter don't look silence rejecting sound don't look for stillness rejecting movement that's not possible you can never find it it's proof is we never found until now that is the proof so same thing when when the mind is going crazy you take the other pill but you make sure you take three pills a day okay so that's my a prescription okay if you're more severe take two times more three times more four times more five times more but at least one times is a prescription everybody okay <laughs> okay any other yes yes 
Okay, so the question is uh, if the same principle applies to physical pain. Absolutely. I have, I have heard many people saying that physical pain had dissolved completely by recognizing the stillness in their body. And in many, during many, many practices. And so, so absolutely, you know, if, if there is physical pain, you can do the same thing. Sometimes your relation to the, your pain is more painful than the pain itself. And it's true to every problem. Sometimes what problem you have is not such a problem. Your relation to the, your problem is more problem. Maybe look, sometimes problem that you have, see how many people have that same problem. But they're not calling it problem. They're not calling it suffering. They're not calling it confusion. They're not calling it anything because they don't have a name to call it. It's not important because they're not even paying attention to it. Because it's not, it's not, not a problem for them. But you have given a name, one name, two names, and you're still more looking, more dictionary, trying to find more names. And you're talking with other friends to find more names. In different languages, you're trying to find names. <laughs> and what they call it in Italian, I don't know. <laughs> you know, you're trying to enrich with all the names. What you're doing, you're trying to making it more solid. You see, so if you sometimes if your body is amazing, you know, if you if you really like listen to carefully, you allow it, it releases a lot of things. Of course, there might be pain. I'm not saying every pain will be released. But even the worst pain, worst physical pain, the, even the physical pain might not disappear, but the whole pain related to the mind in relation to the body will, will go. So in the end, feeling free in your mind is more important than feeling free in the, your body. Because body is something that you leave behind. Mind is something that you continue with. So yeah. I think anywhere, what I'm saying is, your many many people talk about the pain, pain management. You know, and I think the best, best medicine of pain management is to be aware of that stillness. There's no question about it. And in that, in that place, you can care. You can care about that physical pain. It's also physical pain is like expression, expression. You know, you're acknowledging it, you're caring it. You're caring it is to be open to it rather than talking to it. Of course, we never, we never can help not talk because, oh, it's okay, don't worry about it. Some people have worse than this pain, so you're okay. It's okay. If some other people have worse than that, me sounds okay. Me, I'm okay now. Then, so intellectually, you are people make some comforting to themselves, but that those that's not a real solution. It's it, it's okay for temporarily it helps. Anything helps is good, but that's not ultimate solution. Solution is be open. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. And uh, um, I just wanted to also, I'm happy that, uh, you know, as we as being here and also being, you know, at least 200 people and probably some places, it's, it's one computer, there might be more people. So, uh, so uh, many, many people are participating around the world. So, I have my Greetings and prayer to everybody from here from Charlottesville. Okay, thank you. Oh, the uh, next Sunday, uh, what is it? Sunday, Sunday, the April 18th, uh, 12 uh, noon to 1:15 New York time. And so we will have the another uh, webcast teaching. So uh, probably it seems like everybody know in Europe, so uh, that will be a much better timing. Okay, so let everybody know. Thank you. Thank you. Mm.